The Dark Burdens banner is our Year 4 Fallen Heroes banner. Typically these are characters who have fallen to the dark side and have gained tremendous power and unnatural abilities for their sacrifices. Much like last year's Fallen Heroes banner, this year is another incredibly strong lineup. We have Fallen Male Corn, Leon, Julia, and buffed up Radiant Dawn Ike. We'll be talking about their stance, skills, as well as general playstyle and builds. Because these units are so stacked and all of them are pretty much ready to go with their base kits, there isn't a ton to discuss for alternative builds. These guys are just so strong with very little investment. For this banner, we have no 4 star focus unit, but it is a new hero's banner, so the free pick mechanic is in effect. I'm guessing a lot of people are going to be taking advantage of this one. Our first unit is Fallen Male Corrin, here to join his female counterpart from last year. If you didn't like dealing with her, things are not getting better. Melkorn is going to be an infantry blue dragon with 42 HP, 38 attack, 38 speed, 33 defense, and 26 resistance, incredibly high attack and speed with super boons in both stats. This Corrin also has 177 BST which is the highest for all infantry units at the moment and that's an outlier so I'm not sure where that leaves us in terms of BST generations. For reference, a regular army unit like a legendary Edelgard will have around 179 to 180 BST. Corrin is not only super fast with good attack, but he isn't as squishy as other units normally would be. For old skills, Corrin comes with Glimmer, which is going to hurt quite a bit. He also has no follow, like his Adrift ult and Rouse Speed and Defense 3 for extra speed and defense buffs. For his weapon, Melkorn has Brutal Breath, which basically works the same as Fallen Female Corrin's weapon. It grants a flat plus 3 speed, so a neutral Corrin already hits 41 speed. It will then grant bonus stats based on how many allies are within two spaces of Corrin. If there are zero nearby allies, Corrin's gonna get plus five to all stats. If there's one nearby ally, he gets plus three, and two nearby allies get him plus one, with three or more getting Corrin nothing. This stat boost is actually one point less than his female counterpart, but that's because Brutal Breath also gives male Corrin the guard ability if he has one or less nearby ally. Arguably, that is way more annoying to have to deal with. Overall, Brutal Breath signals that Fallen Milkhorn wants to be left completely alone. He'll get plus 5 to all stats and guards, so he'll be extremely annoying to duel considering he's super fast with no follow up. You have to match his speed or the guy is going to double you all day, and his attack set isn't low at all. Because Corrin wasn't fast enough already, he also introduces attack and speed solo 4. Everyone's favorite offensive A skill gets its tier 4 upgrade, but it's not a huge improvement. These tier 4 solo skills simply up their bonus to plus 7 from plus 6. It's a 1 stat point difference, although these are 300 SP skills, so for those of you playing for arena score, that might be a more important factor. When attack and speed solo 4 and brutal breath at full power, this Corrin is going to hit 66 attack and 53 speed. That's literally just for existing with no allies within 2 spaces, and he still has room for field buffs. With Rouse speed and defense, that brings us up to 59 speed, so yeah, have fun trying to outspeed that. In terms of playstyle, Fallen Corn should be left alone and he'll basically kill whatever walks up to him. No follow-up stops any follow-up attack skills or prevention, and he's most likely going to double his opponent. For Sacred Seals, you can honestly use whatever you want. Distant defense is fun to stop range attacks from wearing Corrin down, but you can also just run Distant Counter instead. As with Fima Corrin, using DC doesn't make them super tanks, but they're probably going to kill whatever unit attacks them, and things like Vanish can screw up the other really low HP units. If you want to actually have a one-man army type unit, Fallen Corrin would be great with Legendary Eliwood's bonus doubler buffs, and in general that's going to be a good A scale to use if you have global range buffs to support Corrin with. No C Disrupt can be used to always be able to counterattack back, and Attack Smoke or something like Pulse Smoke can be used to prep multiple encounters. Luckily, dragons can't run close call or repel, but there are still many good skills out there like Wrath or Flashing Blade to take advantage of. The two Fallen Corns are kinda just huge stat sticks, assuming they can be left on their own, and they are very scary units to 1v1. Fallen Female Corn is colorless, so she doesn't have any natural triangle disadvantage, while Male Corn is gonna be a blue dragon, so you can at least try to throw green units at him. While Infalshin may be less effective, there are green mage dragon killers like Thrasir you have to watch out for, so I would definitely not advise taking this Corrin into Anima Seasons. Regardless, I'm sure this Corrin will be another pain in the butt to deal with. 
Our second bad guy is Fallen Leon, aka the Demon King. The regular Leon in Faye is actually already possessed by the Demon King, but this one is fully taken over for the most part. This time Leon is a green infantry mage with 40 HP, 40 attack, 16 speed, 32 defense, and 35 resistance. Talk about min-maxed. Leon has cast away all that speed, but has great base attack, defense, and res for a mage. You'll be able to take some shots, and that's a pretty important part of his kit. For old skills, Leon comes with soul to heal missing health. He also has bonus doubler, which is interesting, and he has Nelsi Disrupt to always be able to counterattack back. This is only the second unit to carry Nelsi Disrupt, and it's a pretty important skill for a specific role. Turns out, Leon is tailor-made for that role, thanks to Blood Tome. This 4 to my tome grants a flat plus 3 attack, so altogether Leon's gonna have 57 attack with the weapon equipped. If Leon fights a foe with a bow, dagger, tome, or staff, then he gains 3 effects. First, he reduces damage from AoE specials by 80%. Second, he reduces damage from attacks by 50%, and that is just always active. Last, if the ranged foe is colorless, Leon also gains weapon triangle advantage over them. Just to clarify on that last part, this only applies to ranged colorless units. Unlike a Raven Tome, Blood Tome doesn't work versus melee colorless units like Valoria or Canagus. So this weapon is pretty crazy. Blood Tome makes Leon a super tank against any ranged attacks by literally taking 50% less damage. He also shrugs off AoE specials and has the triangle advantage against any ranged colorless units. It's going to be very hard to kill Leon with a ranged unit and thanks to Nelsi Disrupt he will be able to deal with Dazzling Staff users or even Fire Sweep Bows. You definitely need to get up close to deal with Leon effectively. Now I love the animation for this weapon because it's basically Leon summoning the actual Demon King from Mortis or from Mortis, and he's gonna do his punch attack which is pretty funny. I'm not sure if this rules out a mythic from Mortis, but then again I'm not sure how they would have shown him as an actual unit. This possessed fallen Leon is kind of what I thought they could have done for a mythic version, but I kind of feel like that's not gonna happen now. For his other skill, Leon brings Rouse attack and res to the game. At the start of the turn, if the unit is not adjacent to an ally, grants plus 6 attack and resistance to the user for one turn. Since Leon has bonus doubler, this is a fine skill, and while Leon doesn't have to totally be alone like Fallen Corn, in Aether Raids it's nice to have some space if you're going to be baiting in attackers. Leon can definitely be a good ranged tank for any game mode, but he's clearly meant to shine and eat the raids. Specifically, he's equipped to deal with multiple ranged threats in one turn, and when his high base attack, he has an okay shot at trying to kill them on the counter. He will take half damage from any ranged attacker, which helps deal with powerhouses like Legendary Alm. He can mitigate AoE specials by 80%, which basically shuts down units like Ophelia. Then when Nelsie Disrupt, Leon can deal with annoying units like Brave Veronica. Thanks to being a green tome, he also just has the advantage over Reinhardt. Well, I think Leon's base kit is fine for this role since he can gain up to plus 12 attack and resistance. I do feel like it's a little sketchy to depend on bonus doubler when the panic structure is literally on every defense team out there. Leon may also struggle to one shot counter his attackers since defenders can gain a lot of bonus HP from Mythic Blessings. For me, I think something like Attack and Res Solo might be more dependable to still gain extra stats and Quick Repose is there to finish off foes with a second hit. You could try Fierce Stance if you really want a clean one shot kill since that would prevent a second attack on Leon. Feel free to experiment, things like a dual stance might also be a good option. For a normal gameplay with less panic sources, I think Bonus Doubler is fine to keep, but Nelsie Disrupt then becomes a little bit niche. You can swap that out for Crook Repels to run another Secret Seal. While Leon has Soul to keep tanking attacks, I feel like 3 charges is a lot, especially without Crook Repose. Times Pulse plus Noontime may be a better combo, or maybe you can support Leon with something like Infantry Rush. For those that want some fun, I wouldn't say something like Close Foil isn't a terrible idea. The only issue is that Blood Tome does absolutely nothing versus melee units, so keep that in mind. In conclusion, Fallen Leon is meant to be a pretty crazy ranged tank. Aether Raid seems to be the place for him, but just how effective will he be? I do think he can be used outside of Aether Raids, but Leon's pretty much always going to be a more defensive unit. That said, with high base attack and bonus doubler, the Demon King does have a pretty nasty right hook. Our third unit is another scary mage. Fallen Julia is a red infantry mage, and if you liked her legendary ult, then oh boy, you're gonna like this one. She has 39 HP, 41 attack, 24 speed, 17 defense, and 40 resistance. Julia comes with three super boons in attack, speed, and resistance, so pick your poison. With 41 base attack, Julia ties for highest attack for any mage with Kyria and Lysithia. Three red mage nukers, all very scary. With 40 base resistance, that's highest for any infantry unit and only behind Nagi and Winter Fae. For old skills, Julia has Iceberg, which is already dealing 20 damage. She also comes with Panic Smoke, which inflicts the annoying panic status in an area. While Leon may have pretty high attack, 
Julia is a straight up monster. Dark Scripture is a 14 my tome that grants up flat plus 3 attack. That means Julia is going to have 58 attack with it equipped. If Julia is not adjacent to an ally, inflict minus 6 attack and res on the foe during combat. And if the foe doesn't have dragon effectiveness, Julia makes a guaranteed follow up attack. Oh boy, Julia would have already done high single hit damage but now she gets a free follow-up basically. This only works on foes who don't have dragon killing weapons and it's not like Julia is weak to those weapons anyway unlike poor Julius. Similar to Corrin, Julia does need some space. She must not be adjacent to an ally for dark scripture to work, but when it works, boy that's some scary stuff. I would not recommend letting her attack a unit who can't fight back because they're probably dead. 58 attack with a minus 6 res in combat debuff and it's only getting worse. Fallen Julia steals her legendary ult's unique B skill, Light and Dark. This skill inflicts minus 2 to all stats on the foe during combat and it totally neutralizes field boss. It also negates adaptive damage so dragons now have to chew through Julia's insane 40 res. With Light and Dark plus Dark Scripture, Julia is going to inflict minus 8 attack and res on the enemy all the time. They can't use res field boss and without a dragon slaying weapon Julia attacks twice. It gets even worse though because Julia also has attack and res solo 4. Another plus 7 attack and resistance when alone which is what Julia wants to do anyway. These fallen units are just way too scary. Let's put everything together now. Dark Scripture plus attack and res solo 4 gets Julia up to 65 attack and 47 resistance. Combined with light and dark you have to include the minus 8 attack and resistance in combat debuff on the enemy and they have no field buffs to hide behind. Just like with legendary Julia it is very concerning how much damage is being put out and this Julia gets a follow up attack which makes it twice as bad. Julia also just has a stupid amount of resistance so even without Naga for dragon effectiveness she can just tank dragon attacks with ease. Her low defense is a concern but with minus 8 attack on the enemy Julia will be tankier than you think. There's pretty much no reason not to use her base kit and I would just add on death blow for even more overkill. Thanks to Dark Scripture this Julia doesn't even need quick repose which is a huge boon so she can be a player phase and enemy phase threat. She just needs one space separation to work her magic. While well, something like Sturdy Impact would be nice, I do like the solo skill since it's going to work on both phases. Besides extra damage, you could try debuffs like Attack Ploy or Attack Smoke. Those regular debuffs are going to stack with the minus 8 attack in combat debuff, so it's a pretty scary situation to be in. Same applies to res debuffs if you want more damage. Chill res on Julia's team is going to be pretty devastating. Overall, Fallen Julia is basically a non-dragon killing red version of her legendary ult. She just packs so much damage and if you do manage to tank a hit, I hope you one shot her back because chances are another attack's incoming. You pretty much want to get to her first and avoid letting her make the first move. Easier said than done. Last we have another equally terrifying unit. Fallen Ike is gonna be that guy in PvE modes that terrorizes most teams and I definitely can't wait to see him in Hall of Forms. Once again, Ike is a sword infantry unit and he has 40 HP, 35 attack, 42 speed, 32 defense, and 23 resistance. He ties for highest speed in the game and of course he's going to have a speed super boon. If you're familiar with the usual fast female swordmaster stat line, this shouldn't be a surprise. Fallen Ike is basically a copy of Marita in terms of stats. Maybe more than just stats because Ike comes with Repel and its stupid potential 40% damage reduction if Ike has more than 10 speed than his enemy. Close Call and Repel are just crazy skills so you already know things are going to be bad. To improve his attack and speed stats, Ike has attack and speed oath for some self buffing capabilities. Fallen Ike brings the Chaos Ragnar with him, it's a 60 might distant counter sword and has another pretty scary effect. Ike gets bonus attack, speed, defense and resistance during combat equal to the current penalty on Ike's stats times 2. This is calculated for each stat individually. So Chaos Ragno is a very good weapon in my opinion. Ike has distant counter plus repel so he's just gonna be a nightmare by default. He also does not care at all about stat debuffs because Chaos Ragno takes any debuff on Ike doubles its value which cancels out the debuff and is going to give Ike bonus stats. You actually do not want to stat debuff a fallen Ike because then Chaos Ragno won't grant more stats to him. That said, this weapon kind of counters panic which is a huge boon to have. If Ike has field buffs on him and they get panicked, Chaos Ragno is going to work on those negative buffs. So if Ike has attack and speed ults plus 5 attack and speed buff, that's going to turn to minus 5 attack and speed thanks to panic. Chaos Ragno then gives Ike plus 10 attack and speed which cancels out Panic's negative values and Ike has his original plus 5 attack and speed buff 
basically. That means Ike is totally fine getting panicked. What's even better is that if Ike has panic on him and he has a normal debuff too, then Chaos Ragnar works on both of those negative values. That is incredibly good since you basically can only stop Ike from getting field buffs if you use something like low or a dull skill which neutralizes the buff entirely. Panic is not going to do the job. Fallen Ike gets his own special called Mayhem Aether. It's actually the same as Radiant Aether, so Ike's gonna keep his 4 cooldown Aether. This is good because Fallen Ike comes with Darting Breath. If the foe initiates Comet, grant plus 4 speed and special cooldown charge plus 1 per attack. The last Breath A skill is here, and of course it comes from Ike. Essentially, if you're familiar with Legendary Ike, Fallen Ike can do similar things. He can spam Aether a ton, and he doesn't need Quick Repose to double. This Ike is depending on pure speed, but thanks to Repel, he will be able to take less damage and the healing from Aether spam is gonna be annoying. Damage reduction effects are great with more HP, and if Ike keeps healing, then that just means he can tank more hits. He's gonna be a fun unit to use and a very scary opponent. Like Fallen Julia, Fallen Ike's base kit is just so good for general play. You got a unit with distant counter, repel, a 4 quit on Aether, darting breath, and 42 base speed. Add on the fact that any stat debuff on Ike only makes him stronger and well, that's a recipe for success, or a recipe for annoyance. In terms of playstyle, this Ike will tank a hit, counter back, and if he doubles, he's gonna proc Mayhem Aether to hopefully get the kill. Thanks to his good speed stat, Fallen Ike also has a much better player phase where he can definitely pull off some doubles of his own. I would go with a defensive sacred seal like attack smoke or distant defense to mitigate even more damage. While I think most people will be keeping darting breath, I do feel like it's not 100% necessary. You could instead replace it with a solo skill for more attack and speed and run flashing blade. If you're thinking of using bonus doubler, I will say that Chaos Ragnar does not get rid of Panic. Panic is still going to neutralize bonus doubler because Ike is going to have no positive buffs to double. This Ike definitely has a lot of options, although I feel like you gotta use Repel, it's just too dumb not to use. In terms of supporting Ike, he is free to get buffed without having to worry about Panic crippling him completely, so that's good. If you really don't want to use Repel, I do feel like he can make a tankier build work because of Chaos Ragno. Fallen Ike isn't that different from Legendary Ike in terms of defensive stats, and that Ike can easily take some hits thanks to spamming Aether for healing. I've seen many crazy Legendary Ike builds, and Fallen Ike is mostly just an upgrade, I would say. While he may be sharing the red color with Julia, I can't say I'd be disappointed with either of them. That's all for this video, another crazy Fallen Heroes banner is here to terrorize the game. For those not summoning, we have a grand hero battle for Ashnard, the Mad King. This guy is another very neat free unit, and hero grails are really upping their value lately. I believe he releases tonight slash tomorrow, so I'll be back to talk about him. Let me know your thoughts on this banner in the comments, and I'll see you guys soon.